Spotify and Stuff's Rock Show on Instagram and YouTube. We have an awesome guest right now, Betsy from Freedom Junkie Radio. Thanks for coming on. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here, Steph. So I was just talking to her before the show started, and I love that I was looking up fellow people like myself that want to really look into life and understand what's going on and not be poisoned by the media and the soil, literally both. And I wanted to know, what can we learn from you? It sounds like you have a huge amount of information about how to kind of stay safe and positive in this crazy world we live in. I do. I, I've been inundated with so much great information that I started my podcast. And the the premise for my for Freedom Junkie Radio podcast is anything that brings more freedom into our lives. Anything. So I've interviewed um, dozens and dozens of people, you know, anything from like home birth, right? So that just your freedom from the birth industry and feeling like you're tied to the hospital and you have to go do that. You don't. 93% of the time, home births work out just fine on their own. 7% of the time, there's an issue where you need to go to the hospital or something. Um, freedom from the death industry. On the other end of life, we have these programmed ideas, and it's not our fault that our parents, our schools, our societies, the media, every, we've been programmed since birth. I know you know this. Yeah, and yeah. I think just that's the first step to becoming free is to recognize is to recognizing even one little bit of whoa wait a minute i was lied to and not necessarily maliciously lied to sometimes we have been maliciously lied to you know if it's the military industrial complex that's creating wars to benefit from right and and yeah um, but a lot of the times you know it's not our parents fault it's not our grandparents fault they were lied to too. And so just being willing to, to recognize that fact and then go down a few of those rabbit holes that corroborate that and make you go, oh my gosh, this is, uh, it, it, it's just a pack of lies. <clears throat> and then forgiving everybody for that and moving beyond and then realizing that you, so there's all these like tangible physical things that we can get freedom from in a way, like the school system, the medical system, the food production system. You know, there's all these things we can talk about and they're great things because every single one of them is a piece of the puzzle when it comes to your own sovereignty. Knowing your rights, I mean, it's very tangible. Um, but then to truly be free in this life, you have to recognize how amazing you are. You know, just the Beautiful. fact that that we came from what whatever our mom was eating when she was pregnant with us is what we're made out of. And she was eating stuff that grew out of the earth. She was eating, you know, vegetables and meat, hopefully. And those that are okay, that is sun. The sunlight came into those things as pro photons and created the apples and the celery and the stuff that your mom ate and the stuff that the animals ate. And then that becomes us. And when we die, I mean, it's just such a precious, 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 amazing. I love that you're like circle of life, like uh Lion King. I dig it, but that we're all interconnected and what's grown on this earth and you eat and put into our body really does create us as humans. Um, and I, back to what you were saying just a little bit ago, we are kind of factory pushed. I don't think some people that become doctors or get in the military are doing it and they're kind of being misled in this factory line of this is a good thing I'm doing right, right? Because this is what I've been taught, you know, and, and this is a good job that makes a lot of money. But people don't understand there's ways to heal yourself naturally and that mentally, if you mentally are in a good state and you're nice to yourself even, and what you put in your body just affects your entire mental well-being and state and that you don't have to turn on the TV and watch the media and believe everything that you hear. You need to really go research things on your own. Absolutely. And the more you start doing that, the more your eyes are opened to, you know, the, the I remember as a child when someone said something to me like, oh, Coke's not good for you. And I remember, I don't know, I was eight years old or something in the late 70s and thinking they wouldn't sell something that wasn't good for you. I mean, yeah, that's right. naive. I, I should have been naive. I was eight years old, you know, like that's that's great. But that's 
there are a lot of products out there that are poison for us, literal poison, and it's pushed as food or pushed as medicine. Yeah. Companies just want to make money sometimes off the back of you. And what gets approved is such a low bar for approval. People don't understand that. They think because it's on the shelves in America or worldwide that it's safe. I mean, America has one of the worst checkpoints. At least Europe is a little bit better. But um, we really let anything go by because it's a financial game. It's all about money. All those people who are approving it are getting paid off too. Yes. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And so that's cool. And then I saw you sing too. You like play guitar and sing? Yeah, I've done that all my life. And I kind of, when I had little babies, I let it go for a while. And so my big things, my my podcast isn't even the main thing. That was just during COVID. I felt like I had all this information that it would have been, it would, it would have been very counter to every cell in my body to not try to figure out how to use my voice and just be another yeah. voice on the front line for um, some good information for people. And people that felt alone. I know I felt very isolated and alone. I'm in an extremely liberal state in California and everyone's very against um, kind of going outside of the norm of not being put in this box. And I know everyone said, now you can't travel anywhere. You can't go anywhere. And I was like, that's fine. I'll stay in the house and grow stuff in my backyard and hang out with my kiddos. But it was a strange time. I wish I got back into radio and podcasting. I was more in full blown, you know, parenting of little kid mode, but it's great that people like you were out there because majority of us felt like we were the weirdos going against some mainstream message of, oh my gosh, fall in line, get something in your body that you don't know about that just got created out of the blue from people you don't know. And, you know, isolate and ruin and stay out of the sun and just stay inside and hide. And I'm like, no, that's not healthy. That's not good. Get out in nature. We just went on a lot of hikes. We just hung out and did a lot of like Airbnb, little tiny house trips. But I'm just glad there's more people out there that weren't afraid to speak their mind because it was a scary time. You know, it's become a little bit more acceptable. Yeah. And that during that time, the people that that I found that were of like mind were so important to me. I did an interview of a guy who was we were talking. We started a know your rights group in Austin. I didn't start it. I was one of the I, I, I came in on like the third meeting. So I was early into it. But we were wondering what our rights were. And how how do we not know that as Americans, you know, yeah. like if someone's saying you have to wear a mask, do you? Our mandate yeah. rights aren't laws. You know, we went, we just kept going with it. What are our medical rights? What are our rights when it comes to traffic stops? What are our, you know, because if you end up in the hospital during COVID and they're like, well, we won't treat you without giving you this shot that you disagree to. Hold on a minute. That yeah. is violating my rights. So what are they? And I met the coolest group of people. And I ended up interviewing a few of them. And one of the things a man said was the most powerful number is one. And I was like, what do you mean? I like that. Because when there's no one standing up, no one's standing up. But when one person, it wasn't that the most powerful number, it's that the greatest gap to a number is one. And when that one person stands up and says, you know what, this is violating my rights and I'm not going to do it three or four more people will stand up right behind them and go, yeah. And then suddenly, yeah. suddenly it's, you know, people can, can break out of, of the, the programming. Yeah. So. I felt isolated in my direct old neighborhood, but then I found um, moms for Liberty, which has been this awesome group. And it's a lot of moms that were on board with, we were ready to start our own community, kind of like our own mini school and whatnot. If they thought they were going to tell us what to do with our children, which sounds like a wild concept, but I was very afraid that people were trying to force me in a direction that I would never naturally go. And so to find this group of women that thought like me, I just felt safer that we could all band together and I'm not alone. Cause I don't know math, man. I, I had to get math tutoring in college just to pass. So I'm like, I better get a group of girls. If I do want to teach my kids this difficult math, I need people that are good in some areas and I'm good in other areas and we can all work together. So it is important to find like-minded individuals. 
So you're homeschooling, you plan to homeschool your children? Not right now. So we were going, this was in 2020 when it was in the thick of it. And we didn't know what direction the government was going to try to push us or whatnot. We made this group of like, well, we're ready to go off grid, you know, and we didn't have to end up doing that. Um, they do go to private school because it's the California public system has gotten really bad. It You have no control. They have drag king and queens coming to read to the children. Mm. I mean, it is just bonkers if you're in another state to to try to explain it. But um, well, that happens here, too. And when I, sp I I retweeted someone who thought that it was bad to have drag queens come and read to our fourth graders which I, I do think like yeah. nothing that has anything to do with sex should have anything to do with no. our at all. Anyway, I got thrown under the bus and called all the names, you know, the yeah. Nazi, woman hating, black hating, transphobic, like all of that. Isn't that yeah. wild? I love everybody. I am so open-minded. I don't look at skin color. I have dated all across the board, like legit. I, I want everyone Perfect. to succeed. There's bad people, bad humans, right? In every color. And why does it have to be when I don't want anything sexualized around my children that I am all of a sudden homophobic or racist? Like to call someone racist to me is so mean and discrediting. It's one of the worst words you can call someone. And I think if you're even a little bit on the conservative side politically, you get roped into this like R word that's horrific. And that's not the truth. Well, so we, I don't know when it started happening, but in my family, there's four of us. I have a husband and two sons. They're both teenagers now. And we've homeschooled them all along. I'd love to talk about that. It's a great journey. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, nothing to be afraid of. It's. I know. I'm afraid of it, but I love, I love people that do it. <laughs> well, we can talk. Like I said, nothing to be afraid of. It's, a, it's an incredible journey if, that, if it's what you want, if it's what you want to do. Um, anyway, at some point, my husband started calling everything racist. We'd be like, hey, we're out of peanut butter. And he'd go, that's racist. And that's how people are using the word. It was a joke. I mean, he was, yeah. and I was annoyed with it at first. I'm like, yeah. it's not funny. And then it did become funny. We've, it's, we've kind of gotten over the hump of that joke in our family, but it still happens. So I think that was part of what just desensitized me. I am so not racist. Like you're, I don't care what, like you were just saying, what color your skin is. Yeah. Exactly what Martin Luther King said. The content of your character is what I will judge you on. And I will judge you. That is human nature. We are, I love that. I think it was Thomas Sowell who said, we are by nature prejudice. That's what we do. I'm prejudice, prejudice against every other man. I didn't choose to be my, or is it discriminative? That's it. It's discriminatory. I discriminated against all the other billions of men in this world to choose one to be my partner and husband and father of my children. I discriminated against all the other houses in Austin and picked this one. That's what we do. We choose what we want and that's normal and there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. And so um, we were talking about uh, the idea of discriminating against someone on the quality color of their skin is ridiculous or their sex or their whatever they're doing now if they've you know if they're wearing on their sleeve that they made some really bad that they continue to make bad decisions in life whether it's how they dress or you know just like you know like if they bring prison out of prison with them, I hold prison. I don't hold prison against you. If you know you, everybody's learning and on a different trajectory in life. But if, if the decisions that got you there, if you're continuing to bring those with you, I am probably going to cross the street. It has nothing yeah. to do with the color of your skin. <laughs> yeah. You know? No, it's about safety and intuition of just being a good person. And I don't know. I just love everyone. And I liked how somehow isolating groups in 2020 got weird. And then if you didn't want to get a jab, all of a sudden you were this horrible person. But it was like, there's all these people on the same side saying freedom of my body, freedom of choice. But the same thing they were preaching about didn't come back to us and our bodies when it came to something different. And so I just, it was, it was a weird time. I feel better now. I feel a lot better now. I will say my friend pool has shifted um, things it's a bummer I had in common with people and we got along great. 
And then they no longer wanted to be friends with me because we thought differently about decisions made um, during COVID times. And I'm just like, that shocks me. And I don't care. I don't, I'm friends with a lot of people that think differently than me and, you know, are very liberal and that's cool. Let's talk all day. I want to hear about it. I'm not mad or I don't want to cut you out of my friend circle because we're not the same person. Usually I learn something from somebody that's very different from me. So I don't know. It'd be a very boring place if we all thought the same. Exactly. Exactly. Even and that's when, why. Even when I'm roped into like thinking that a politician or a political idea might be a good thing. I've, I've, I interviewed Larkin Rose and he, that Who's was, a that? Great, he is, uh, he's been a libertarian mind for decades now. And he recently he put out. A, or? No, he's in Arizona. Okay. And he put out a film recently called The Jones Plantation, which I highly recommend. It's okay. um, it's an allegory of how it, it takes place on a plantation during slave times. So you have to it's, it's hard to watch at times, but it's an allegory of how we are slaves to the state. Yeah. And it's really well done. And so he is an anarchist. And. This has been a seed that's been planted for me for a while. Like even in one of my songs, my song, What's in the Vaccine, that came out in 2021. Um, I'd love it if anyone who hears this goes to my YouTube channel. and Yeah, I, I have a lot of music fans. So I will go to your YouTube channel. What's your YouTube handle? It's Betsy Dewey. B -E -T -S -S Betsy Dewey. Check B -E -T -S -S out the What's in the Vaccine song. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, don't go to the one that's Betsy Dewey topic or whatever. That's not me. That's okay. it's but my channel. You'll see it. And uh, so, what's in the vaccine? It's just a bunch of questions. Just a bunch of questions I ask, and it's hilarious. It's a little country song, and one of them is, um, let's see, um, uh, what's in the vaccine? I can remember them. All the hippies in Austin think that they should wear a mask. What they did was forget to think and they forgot to ask what is a virus? Where do they come from? Do masks even work? Is government a good thing? Is it possible there's an agenda to enslave us all? Why do celebrities throw up satanic symbols when Joe Biden speaks? Why don't we know what he means and what's in the vaccines? That's I love the it. I get it. No, so that was great. Is government a good thing? That's just, yeah. it's just a question to ponder. And so I've been there for a while and Larkin pushed me over the edge. After that interview, I was, I, it really, well, I did some, whenever I go to interview somebody, I do a little digging on them so I don't sound like an idiot in interviewing them. Yeah. I had watched a couple of his interviews or I, a couple of his debates where he debated libertarian concepts and I think it's time for us to try something new as a species. And it would be, when did we get programmed with the idea that there has to be authority over us? Why would we put another human being who's just as fallible as we are into a power, position of power where they can um, lock you away for something that they've decided is something you shouldn't do? Now, there's the whole, there's a, it's a whole wonderful debate to have and, and the discussion to have about, you know, morality and ethics and sovereignty and, and what do you do with the bad guys in a free society and all that. I mean, it's, it's, it's open for yeah. discussion. And like, but, I understand rules and some structure and having maybe someone to look to and whatnot. But um, I also want us to be like, if you're of sound mind, you should be able to make your own decisions. And especially, man, I'm paying so much tax dollars and a lot of it I don't have control over. I don't know where it goes or what's going on, you know, and like well, taxes are slavery. <clears throat> yes. Anyone who forcibly takes your money from you. That's a form of slavery. Yeah. And it's at the gas pump. It's at my house taxes, like everything. It's so expensive. But um, and also I don't like that where I live on our board, everyone thinks the same. Exactly. So at least if you're going to have people in charge, have diversified, like have some people that think a certain way, some people that think another way. So there's not just a complete takeover of this is my way or the highway. This is what we're going to do. So I'm thinking about running for my district in a couple of years. We'll see. It's, it's a lot because I know people can really attack you. And I've been attacked back in radio days in such a minor way. So I, I don't know if I'm ready to do it, but I'm, I'm debating 
It's- well, the best thing you would be doing is doing something locally. Yeah. I, as a knee-jerk reaction in 2011 at Christmas time, uh, joined a political party for the first time. I am not political. I don't take a side. I see the hypocrisy in both sides. I don't buy yeah. into it. But I uh, was so irritated that they were passing the NDAA, which at the time had language that it was just one of those omnibus bills that they have to pass because it's the National Defense Authorization Act. They have to pass it. It pays our military. So they popped in there, right, you know, at the last minute language that said, and it did pass, by the way, that's why I got pissed off and ran for Congress. But um, it said that Americans are now um, can be detained indefinitely on suspicion of being a terrorist. Oh, so my goodness. Here, yeah. And that was in 20, that passed in 20, early 2012. Well, we were all just having New Year's, you know, Christmas. And what's their framing of a terrorist, right? You know, exactly. that could be anything. Yeah. So they can put you away, indefinitely detain you. And I'm like, we've been doing that to people and putting them in Guantanamo, not Americans. That's not American. We shouldn't put anybody away without a trial. That yeah. is in our Bill of Rights. That's in our we need freedom bill. of spe- speech. That's why I love that we're able to even have podcasts and talk about how we feel and, you know, Hopefully feel safe. Hopefully I'm not locked up next week. But you know. well, and, and the thing is, we have to. We yeah. have to. We cannot. Fear cannot be in, in part of it. So so I ran for Congress. I got pissed. I'm like, this passed. Nobody's doing anything about it. Nobody cares. And so uh, I joined the Libertarian Party. And I, I had no idea that I would actually get the nomination. And I did. And it was a process. My skin grew much thicker during that time period. And you have to. Yeah. yeah. But I also I don't it's the system. And I don't I don't buy our system anymore. So I I think locally is is the key. We have to change things locally as locally as we can. Start with yeah. yourself. Change yourself. Yeah. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Betsy, for taking some time out of your day and stopping by the new podcast. I'm excited to interview more people that think like you and are free thinkers and have some advice. And we're going to have to have you back on maybe for a homeschool advice uh, podcast. Sure. That'd be great. Sure. Let me plug my book to have gotten the podcast yeah. here and the music. There's a book I wrote called Take Life by the Horns. And it's everything I've learned about just taking life by the horns, like, like making your life into something that is, uh, that, that you want it to be. I and love it. And Longhorns UT is close by. Well, yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not a Longhorn, you know, I'm a Texan. No, no, I, I lived in Austin for a year. And so I went to some UT games and I love Austin. It was fun. I did South by Southwest there every year. And so it's a, it's a great town, but that's, I do think of Longhorn, um, and taking life by the horns. That's funny. I put that together. <laughs> Well, you know, Steph, thank you so much for having me on and uh, I'll look forward to the next time. Yeah. Thank you. Okay.